There are good zombie movies, and there are bad zombie movies. But today's film is arguably the best worst zombie movie ever. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Lucio Fulci's wild gut muncher, Zombie 3. Released in 1988, Zombie 3 really should get an asterisk by it. Fulci is credited as the director, but a good chunk of the film was made by Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso. Cioè lui non gli manca... Cioè io e Claudio eravamo quelli che si arrangiano, sai che vuol dire manca una cosa e cioè beh... The stories for why this is are more fascinating than anything actually in Zombie 3, and have taken on an almost mythical status over the years. Mattei and Fragasso claim Fulci was ill and unhappy on the set and only provided around 50 minutes of movie. Era un'ora, era un'ora e mancava il contrario, mancavano 20 minuti per finirlo. For his part, Fulci has disputed this in interviews, claiming he shot 75 minutes or so of the footage, and that he asked to leave the project because he wasn't getting to make the movie he wanted. In interviews over the years, Mattei, Fragasso, and Fragasso's wife, Rosella Drudy, have said very nice things about Fulci. Fulci, however, has been less kind to Mattei and Fragasso in particular in interviews he did before he died. He seems to have disliked Fragasso quite a bit from some of his published comments. Because of this, half the fun of watching Zombie 3 is watching and guessing what scenes Fulci shot and which were Mattei. It feels like a fair chunk of Zombie 3 is a Mattei and Fragasso production because it feels a lot like Hell of the Living Dead from almost a decade earlier. C'è una fila della sceneggiatura. Dovete calcolare che all'epoca io ero abbastanza contrariato perché Virus, l'inferno dei morti viventi, che era precedente. Whatever the case, Mattei claims ownership of the opening and closing segments of the film. Poi tutte le parti con gli uomini vestiti di bianco, con le tute anti-contaminazione, anti quelle le ho girate io. E poi, cioè, tutto il l'inizio e la fine. Fulci claims the flying zombie head, saying it's one of his greatest cinematic achievements. <laughs> yeah, that gets a WTF for me too. Honestly, I could do an entire video just chronicling the backstory of Zombie 3, guessing who filmed what and talking about the crazy behind the scenes stuff. And <laughs> maybe I will someday. But you're here for the splatter. Can Zombie 3 deliver Fulci and by extension Mattei and Fragasso another 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Maclo Smith, Phil Moore, and Torben Kasberg. Apologies if I butchered anyone's name. If you want to help sponsor some videos, sign up for my Patreon. You'll find the link in the pinned comment in the description below. Alright, let's get bloody. We fade in on this dude in a tube. Looks like he might be on his way to Meta Luna. Man, an obscure This Island Earth joke not two minutes into the video. This is gonna be a delight. Let's try that again. We fade in on this guy who's browning nicely in this convection oven. See? The doc's like, time to baste him. The lighting in this scene is really weird. I feel like Bruno Mattei probably filmed this at an intersection under a malfunctioning traffic light. Nothing's happening. That's impossible. And if you guessed this baste in was gonna make this dude come back to life, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. <laughs> Man, he's looking great. <laughs> I can't decide if I'm appalled or impressed by the quality of this obviously rubber zombie mask. I mean, it's kind of impressive he came back to life as Yul Brenner, but somehow mutated into Michael Berryman. Afterwards, the doc makes some calls. Yeah, hi, can you tell me who's actually in charge of this movie? I mean, I signed on with Fulci, but now I got Mattei and Fragasso bossing me around. I also like that this project is called Death One. I'm obliged to, to give up work on Death One. Clearly, Bruno Mattei and team learned nothing from the disastrous Operation Sweet Death back in Hell of the Living Dead. This also means this should probably be called Death 2. He hangs up and his face really says it all. Dear God, I'm trapped in a Bruno Mattei movie. Then we hop over here for a quick fly through the credits. A film by Lucio Fulci with assists by Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso. And you gotta give Zombie 3 this, this main theme is pretty great. It's also cool they gave this movie the same basic title font as Demons. And apparently these soldiers are guarding the new LEGO installation. You probably don't know Darren Serafian unless you're an avid credits reader. He went on to direct over 20 episodes of House. He's also Robert Altman's nephew. I'm also comfortable saying I can guarantee he's the only guy in this movie who's been nominated for an Emmy. Here's Beatrice Ring, last seen in Fulci's Enigma. And Richard Raymond, who's really stuntman slash actor Ottaviano Dell'Acqua pretending to be American. We last saw Ottaviano as the wormy zombie in Zombie. 
we'll be seeing a lot more of him in future Sick Flicks episodes. Next up is Alex McBride, aka Massimo Vani. He was a stalwart of Matei Productions. Honestly, this scene probably isn't even really part of the movie. It's just Matei filming the crew showing up for work one day. Story and screenplay by Claudio Fragasso, which is only half accurate. Fragasso's wife, Rosella Drudy, worked extensively on the script as well. A noi ci aveva preso in simpatia, c'è stato un bellissimo rapporto. Devo dire che ci credevamo tanto perché la sceneggiatura, che poi ci abbiamo lavorato tutte e tre insieme. But hey, you know you're in for a treat when the guy who gave us Night Killer is involved with the movie. And special effects by Franco Di Girolamo! And yeah, I'm using that joke every time he's involved in a movie. It's fun to say. Anyway, back in the movie, the doctor's about to take off with something, but these guys are gonna steal it. <laughs> Who are these people? What are they stealing? Who cares? Fragasso doesn't have time to explain things like the plot. Man, it's like an episode of the A-Team. People get shot without any bullet holes or blood. One guy takes off with the box, but don't worry, the helicopter is in hot pursuit. <laughs> Jesus, this guy shoots worse than a stormtrooper. No, not my lunchbox. And great, now he's green slimed. I'm sure that's no big deal. Also, look at this acting. The good news is it's his left hand, so he'll still be okay to wipe his butt. And since they somehow lost him with a helicopter, let's stop for some exposition. The Death One compound is far more dangerous than any of us ever imagined. Then the military guys show up with even more bad news. There were traces of blood all around. Strange colored blood. Damn it! Acting! Back at the hotel, our thief is getting room service. Who calls room service for water? The busboy's like, what are you doing, man? You have a faucet right in the room. And <laughs> no tip. That water might be a little more yellow next time you order it. Back inside, something fishy is going on because our thief is looking a little green around the gills. He's getting ready to perform some home surgery. I hope his job had benefits because he's going to need some severance pay. I was going to include another amputation joke here, but then I got stumped trying to come up with one. Next thing you know, these extras from the crazies are invading the hotel. You could call it a hostile takeover. Also, set your Bruno Mattei ripoff counter to one. And don't look now, but the busboy's finger looks pretty bad. I wouldn't count on that thing if I were him. Eventually, the soldiers find patient zero. He's down here in the basement and definitely looks like he's not peeling well. Then we jump over to the soldiers. Evacuate the premises. Why are these dudes standing like this? And eliminate everyone there. Sounds like Operation Death One is about to live up to its name at least. Oh hey, look, it's Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso. Project Brick Oven Pizza is proceeding according to plan, sir. For years, there's been a rumor that they were basically cremating an effigy of Fulci here. But they swear it isn't true. E praticamente l'abbiamo girato consapevoli che poteva essere così, però non è che l'abbiamo fatta apposta, cioè non è che cioè non siamo così. Of course, the doctor isn't happy. Who told you to make pepperoni corpse pizza? I wanted supreme. Turns out the ashes could come back down and infect people. General Cranky isn't buying it, though. That's ridiculous. Pure science fiction. <laughs> gravity. Next you hippies will tell me the Earth is round. Now we're at this radio station, where Terminator X is working the afternoon drive slot. Wonder if he's gonna turn into a zombie at the end. Place your bets now. This is just a transition so we can finally meet our main characters. Which is great, since we're already 20 minutes into the movie. Look, it's Budget Hugh Jackman. Please let this turn into an Italian Wolverine movie. Then we jump to this RV to meet even more characters. Not gonna lie, I feel like Zombie 3 has a lot of characters for a zombie movie. Speaking of, here are two more. And who thought filming this shot through the sky reflection on the windshield was a good idea? This had to be Bruno Mattei. But hey, at least we're treated to this riveting dialogue. Ecological bullshit. Now even Blue Heart's become an ecological nut. Don't smoke. Don't pick the flowers. I get it, I get it. This is another socially conscious zombie movie. And once in a while, I like to piss on a bush. Hell yeah. No, no, he didn't mean it like that, you pervs. He meant urinate on a plant. His diatribe is interrupted when they find these dead birds. Wait, I thought this was Zombie 3, not Zombie 5 killing birds. At any rate, I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but this looks like foul play. Then, in a totally believable move, they decide to move them off the road. Let's get them off of the road. Yeah. If you guessed they were going to come back to life and attack, give yourself another screenwriter's credit. 
This scene really is pretty impeccable. And back in our other movie, the guys run into this flock of birds, who then wind up in the RV. It's a real free for owl in here. <laughs> Also, you really have to admire the soundtrack choice for this scene. I mean, nothing expresses the horror of being attacked by zombie birds quite like some generic wuss rock. Luckily for them, the soldiers are here. These two aren't even dating, and he hasn't been attacked by birds yet, but he's already henpecked. Back with our other couple, things have gone from bad to worse. Level with me. How bad is this zit? Should I just pop it or what? She heads in to find the Clearasil, but all she finds are jump scares on clearance. Oh shit, this zombie's not messing around. He's got a machete and everything. Guess he wandered over here from Nightmare City. It's a good thing he's got that machete too. Makes it easier for him to cut to the chase. He gets the gas face, literally. Then she asks him how much he can handle and makes him flamous. Back at base, things are getting worse. There have been numerous incidents of inexplicable violence reported throughout the area. Don't worry though, the doctor is here to show us more of his acting skills. How? By continuing to kill thousands of innocent victims? This dude might be the Italian William Shatner. Of course. We are already working on studying an antidote. I mean, really, this is a masterclass. I feel like we need an award for this. Over in another of our movies, the soldiers and the girls have arrived at this abandoned resort. <laughs> Why do all these places look like they've been empty for years? The zombie outbreak just started. Hugh Jackman is like, don't worry, I'm gonna call Fulci and get to the bottom of this once and for all. Hello? Can I speak to Lucio Fulci, please? What do you mean he quit the movie? What? Matei's in charge. Say no more. While that's going on, our other soldier goes exploring. Oh, it's a grow house. Now this all makes sense. Back downstairs, they just randomly find guns. Because, sure, why wouldn't there be a case of military-grade weaponry just laying around in an abandoned resort? These two head off for a ride. And some riveting dialogue. I hope I didn't ruin your weekend. Ah, oh, well. We didn't have anything else to do. Back at HQ, I'm not sure the general knows how a phone works. That lower part goes next to your mouth, not your throat, sir. These two drive off for reasons, but the jeep breaks down. What's the matter with this thing? Something wrong with the engine. Dude, stop. You're gonna flood it. They split up, naturally, and apparently we've wandered into the mist. Oh, here's the source of all the fog. It's just the jeep. The girl's still exploring, but she's not alone. <laughs> what the hell is going on with this dude's toenails? Gross. And rather than, you know, eat her brains, he just pushes her out the window. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, let's roll with that. Luckily, Bo is here to save her, except she's somehow become a zombie. She's practically a Hall & Oates song. <laughs> Do you kids even remember Hall & Oates? Christ, I'm old. Bo isn't out of the woods yet, though. There are zombies everywhere. Half the fun of Zombie 3 is trying to guess who directed what, and I'm firmly convinced this segment is the work of Fulci. It's way too cool to be Matei and Fergasso. And no joke, this is why I love Italian horror so damn much. This sequence is awesome. Fulci doesn't get the respect he deserves. Bo manages to escape and runs into the guy and the girl in the Corvette. It's like all our movies are finally hooking up. Back at the resort, these two head off to find some food. The problem is they didn't realize they were on the menu. <laughs> and seriously, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. How can this head fly? Back over with Bo, the henpecked boyfriend finally goes full zombie and makes his move. I'm feeling better, Patricia, but I'm thirsty. For your Bo puts up a valiant fight, but in the end, he's overrun by the zombie horde and becomes the main course on tonight's buffet. Ah! Ah! Patricia tries to make her escape, but she basically wanders right into Michael Jackson's thriller video. This is all a bridge too far for her, so she leaps into the river to make her escape. Back at the resort, the girl who got attacked by the birds has become a zombie, and she thinks Beatrice Ring here looks like a real snack. Then eventually she drops in on the guys below. After that, Patricia shows up and she's barely got a leg to stand on. And she brought the zombies with her. Everyone barricades themselves inside, but the zombies are breaking down the walls like they're Chris Jericho.
Don't worry though, these randomly placed weapons from earlier are gonna come in handy now. Like this flamethrower. Eventually they do escape, but run right into more zombies. This is kind of like an issue of Marvel Zombies as Wolverine fights the undead. Hugh Jackman's about to escape, but this guy gets him in the toehold. Don't worry, Hugh grabs his board and gives him a taste of the wood life. <laughs> you could say he's really lumbering through this scene. Everyone regroups and heads down by the river where they find… canoes? What, were you expecting vans? Back at HQ, the general wants a status report. Useless slaughter. You'll address me by my proper title. That's Sergeant Slaughter to you. Back on the river, it looks like our heroes are about to wander into an Italian cannibal movie. They don't find cannibals though, they find military guys. Who then try to kill them. Good times. Back at HQ, Dr. Shatner is doing more acting. I should like to inform you that the epidemic started with the burning of the body. Oh? Look, let's not play the blame game. I think it's safe to say we're all responsible for the zombie apocalypse. We have to vaccinate everybody in this region and then spread the news to the rest of the world. Start spreading the news. Now you're talking science fiction. Man, this general is really into sci-fi. Death one brings the dead back to life. It makes them feed on human flesh. What do you call that, General? Science fiction? Well, yeah, he's called it science fiction twice already. Weren't you paying attention? You created it! We worked on it! Acting. Spock! This dude really is like 98% ham. Back with our heroes, they make the always wise decision to split up again. Nancy's like, thanks for leaving me with the gimp. They do manage to find a pregnant woman, and if you guessed where this is headed, no screenwriter's credit for you. It's pretty obvious. And if you had Alien on your Bruno Mattei ripoff bingo card, mark it. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Don't let. Patricia heads off to find the guys who are named Kenny and Roger. Kenny! Roger! Yes, you gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Then they get stopped by the military and surrender. Guess they're the cowards of the county. Nancy's about to deliver this zombie baby, but zombie baby daddy is like, I'd like to do the delivery myself, thanks, and rips her face off. Patricia is squaring off with Glenn, and she nails him with the shovel. I was hoping she was going to pick his brain, but I still dig this. The guys reunite with Patricia and are then surrounded by zombies and low on ammo. But they find a conveniently placed hand grenade, which they use to blow the roof off this mother. <laughs> But wait, they also find a helicopter. What are the odds? They're probably just gonna crash it into the end of demons. Kenny takes off and Roger's like, you picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille, as he tries to climb aboard. And these zombies are clearly Assassin's Creed fans because they're hiding in the haystacks. They drag Roger down for a roll in the hay, except I don't think this one's gonna have the proverbial happy ending. Roger is still fighting, but if you've seen Night of the Living Dead, you know how this is going to end. Guess he should have known when to walk away and when to run. Also, Bruno Mattei ripoff count plus two for this platoon and Night of the Living Dead homage. Kenny and Patricia survive and fly off to the swerve ending. The new world and the new cycle have begun. Oh look, Blue Heart's a zombie. Who'd have guessed? Maybe Patricia and Kenny will run into Franny and Peter up there though. And let's rock into the credits. Zombie 3 really may be the best worst zombie movie ever. Doesn't make much sense, it feels suspiciously like Matei's Hell of the Living Dead, and it gleefully borrows from better films in the Bruno Matei tradition. And yet, it's entertaining almost in spite of itself. You can have a good time kicking back trying to figure out what scenes were Fulci's and which belonged to Matei and Fragasso, or you can just laugh at the absurdity of the actual film. Either way, it's more fun than it has any right to be. But is it splattery enough to earn five barf bags? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Zombie 3 delivers. We've got tons of zombie kills, a ripped off face, throat impalings, gut munching, and too many other things to list. The FX quality is all over the place, much like the rest of the film, but there's enough splatter here to justify a 4 barf bag rating. This is definitely a sick flick. 
Looking for another gory Italian zombie film? Then be sure to check out my review of Hell of the Living Dead. It makes a perfect double feature with Zombie 3. You'll find a link here on the screen after my outtakes. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. <laughs> Fulci is the creditor. Ah! Oh boy, this is gonna be a great episode. Fulci is the credited director. Ooh, say that fast. Credited director, credited director. <laughs> These videos get worse every week. The stories for why this are are more fascinating than anything actually in Zombie 3 and almost have taken. Oh, God. There's nothing quite like proofreading your script while you're saying it. Because of all this, half the fun of Zombie 3 is watching and guessing what's. Fuck. This is a really simple process, Mike. You just look at the words on the teleprompter and say them with your mouth. At the rate I'm screwing up lines, this is going to be a six-hour rough cut. 46 minutes! Yeah, hi, can you tell me who's actually in charge of this movie? I mean, I signed on with Fulci, but now I got Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso bossing me around. I don't even know why I write scripts, because I can't read them. I should just wing it. We'll be seeing him a lot more in future episodes. Uh, you can do this. You're a professional. They do manage to find a pregnant woman, and if you guess where this is headed, no screenwriter's credit for you. If you guess guessed. You'd think after a hundred videos and two years that I would be a lot better at this. Nancy's about to deliver the zombie baby. Baby. The zombie baby. Zombie baby. Alerted to Lamberto ba- alerted. Jesus. Zombie 3 really may be the best worst zombie movie ever, much like this is the best worst sick flicks episode ever. For years there's been a rumor that they were basically crema- crema- cremating. Crema- creating. Cremating. I'd like to cremate this video. Oh, thank God that's over. I put that on paper because I don't be all the way through.